Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I start, uh, Knife Hand Blind Spot, Rock and Roll Ninja Graphic Novel. Uh, Expendables is at the Fulfillment Center. Uh, they got the goodie bags early, a day early. So it's going to go out in a staged release. It's going to go uh, the main cover, the Kelsey Shannon cover first, and then the variants, and then the <laughs> there's like a, all five soft cover books and then the uh, uh, hard covers. It'll basically be one per week. I've mentioned, geez, since the beginning of this channel, how much I love John Carter of Mars, and um, who is in the public domain, I believe, the first four novels. And for years, people have been telling me, if you like John Carter, you should read this book called Starlight. And I do, I kind of remember when this came out because I was remembering that even the people who don't like Mark Millar's stuff, they were recommending it. Just basically, everyone liked it. But I flipped through it, I was like, I don't really get it because back then, I hadn't really seen any of the, the serials. You know, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon. Uh, this summer? Last summer? Time is meaningless ever since the <laughs> pandemic and lockdown. I will remember stuff that's like so old and it's like, that was this April. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> April of this year. So anyway, either this year or last year, I can't tell them apart. Uh, I saw, I don't know, an hour's worth of, I think it was the second Flash Gordon serial. And I was really, really into it. And I got like, you know, 45 minutes in and I was like, oh, I wonder. And I went on the wiki and it's like, it's like 340 minutes for the entire, you know, quote, season, although it wasn't really a season. And half of that is just recapping the last week because people would go into the theaters and sometimes you'd miss it. So they would spend a minute recapping the last uh, episode. So anyway, I started reading this on an airplane, which is <laughs> everyone always gets down on like Martin Scorsese. He's like, I don't want my uh, movies watched on a, you know, a smartphone. And I'm like, chill out. Nobody was going to go to the theaters to see The Irishman. Got freaking de-aging on 75-year-old actors who, like, can barely move. It's like, oh, he looks young. He moves like an old man. <laughs> There's this scene of Robert De Niro's character, like, curb stomping this guy. And it's so clear that it's, like, this elderly man. He can barely, like, move. But anyway, I don't think it's that bad to watch movies on a phone. But comic books, oh, my, oh, wow. Oh my gosh, it's just freaking brutal. Oh, it's just so brutal. So I read like half of this and then I just got exhausted by constantly, you know, zooming and turning and it just, it's so small. And uh, so I finished it today <laughs> on my uh, tablet. And man, it is excellent. That being said, I kind of need to reread it because I got really wrapped around the axle about two things. This story is kind of like origin in the 1950s and then it's kind of current day, although I might have missed a cue for like what year it takes place. But it makes a lot more sense if the origin was in the 30s or 40s and then this story would have taken place in like the 1980s. So it's about this uh, uh, kind of Flash Gordon guy named Duke McQueen and his adventures on Tantalus. And this is uh, his uh, kind of love interest at the time. And then he goes back to Earth and he finishes his life. He gets married, he has a regular marriage, and then she dies of cancer, and now he's old and alone. So they spend a good amount of time, you know, talking about the reality of being old and alone and kind of a burden to your children. And then he ends up, you know, getting, you know, the call to adventure. Our heroes are all murderers, <laughs> like gleeful, enthusiastic murderers. I found this uh, kill count for Luke Skywalker, and it's 370,000. And you say, oh yeah, well, the Death Star. Well, he was still way up there if you take out the Death Star. Uh, one of the things I noticed when watching these serials is just like how good everyone is fighting and like the body count for everyone. In these serials, they'll always have like the old man or like the cowardly sidekick. And those guys are still just dropping bodies. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, you funny little guy. You've only killed 12 men today. I've killed 1,200. And he's like, oh gosh, Flash, I, don't leave me behind. I'm scared of the dark. So I had this weird thing where I kept thinking about John Wick the entire time, which is probably not the intent of the writer. Um, but I was just bringing, you know, my own stuff to it. I always talk about the first time I saw 
Guardians of the Galaxy. I hated it because I thought I was going to see a Han Solo movie. And instead it was like this goofball hipster and like eight track tapes. But then when I realized what it was... The second time, it totally worked for me. So he goes back to a planet that he thinks he's saved. It's been enslaved again. Please look at the screen. Tell me you're a European artist without telling me you're a European artist. This pose right here, you're just not going to see it from an American artist. It just, we don't think that way. Even the best artists out there, they don't do poses like this. You might say, okay, so she's standing there. No, she's standing in a very particular way that's very... Realistic to women, there's there's not a lot of drawing here, you know, even like this line right here is not even really necessary It's it's form instead of a detail and shading. I mean look at this This is you know the black of the ink and then two other colors and that's it and then stuff like this like these little dot eyes That's very European, but I actually just stopped and appreciated uh, this panel right here So they make a good point that you know, it's not just about being a hero that inspires people. It's also that being a hero can inspire yourself and you can act better if you have more responsibility. Uh, when I first got into Marines, and basically almost all the time, eh, I got better. Eventually I got okay at it. But there's this weird thing where um, you have to do this hiking, these, you know, uh, forced marches. And, you know, as infantry, you got like a hundred pounds on your back, sometimes more. And you don't get to quit. <laughs> like, the, like it doesn't exist. Sometimes you fall back, you know, very, you know, sometimes people will, will fall out. But you don't get to quit. Like you, you just have to keep doing it. And something amazing happened. I was in SOI, School of Infantry, and I wasn't doing really great on the hikes. I, didn't, I never fell all the way out, um, but I would fall back and it would be very difficult for me. And then they made me a squad leader. And all of a sudden, when I had to think about other people instead of myself, I was just trucking. I could do any hike imaginable because I wasn't thinking about my own pain. I was making sure so-and-so, you know, was keeping up. I was, you know, reminding this other Marine uh, to drink water. I was making sure this person hadn't left their rifle. You know, it, stepping up, uh, weirdly enough, made it easier for myself in most regards, not more difficult. This is very classically European art style, but then this gun has too much detail and I can kind of see the reference that he used. And it's kind of like, okay, so you just found an AK-47 and then you kind of used that. I just prefer just, just freehand everything. There were some points where people were literally saying the subtext of the story. And I was like, you know, what would have been more powerful would be to say nothing. At one point, the kid who's the sidekick, his parents are murdered. And there's an old statue of Duke McQueen. And then the kid says to the guy who killed his parents, he looks up at the statue of Duke McQueen. He gets inspired by this hero who had saved his planet before and will, you know, return soon. And he's like, I'm going to get revenge on you. And I was like, you don't say it. <laughs> no, like the scene totally worked without the dialogue. All you needed to happen was just him to like be scared look up at the Duke McQueen statue and then be like, you know, inspired and just kind of like stare at the guy. And I, I didn't need the, the hyper literalness of I'm going to get revenge on you. But there's a really, really nice uh, epilogue on Earth. So, yeah, I, I really, really like this a lot. It definitely is something that needs to be reread, especially if you get wrapped around the axle on a bunch of <laughs> petty ass shit that you brought to the table. Absolutely fantastic book. Uh, Starlight, I got it on Comixology for, I don't know, 10 bucks, something like that. It's like 160 pages. Definitely go uh, check it out. I fan Blind Spot, Rock and Roll Ninja Graphic Novel, and I will have new comic reviews up all this week. Thanks, bye.